Hi there. In this video, we are going to be adding authentication to our app. If you haven't watched the introduction to this video, go ahead and watch part 18 of this series. The first thing we need is a new API endpoint to allow the user to authenticate. This is going to be a new controller and I want to drive this via the tests. So I'm going to jump in and create a new request spec. So I have the book spec here and alongside that I'm going to create a new file called authentication spec rb. And let's just grab this boilerplate. So we'll describe authentication and we'll describe the API, which will be post authenticate. Inside there, I'll have a its block and I'll say it authenticates the client. So the idea here is that we're going to build a new API endpoint authenticate, um, which will work via a post request. Post request makes sense here because not only are we uh, posting data to the server, but we're also um, authenticating, um, which is changing some state on the server. So the actual API call will be post to API v1 authenticate. And I can run that test now. And we get a failure, as we would expect, for an undefined root. So let's add a new root for this. And you can see we have the, the namespace, API v1, and the books resource. In this case, it makes more sense to uh, define the root manually, i.e. doing post authenticate to and then specifying the controller and the action. The reason for that is I'm calling the endpoint authenticate but it would be more conventional to have the API being called the authentication API. So given that the names are slightly different uh, we can't really use resources. So I'll say authentication, create. And I'll run my tests again. And we can see that we're getting further. We're no longer getting the routing error. Uh, Rails is now complaining because we haven't defined the controller. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll open the books controller as a reference. And alongside that, I'll create a new file called authentication controller. And again, I'm going to steal the boilerplate. So we have authentication controller, uh, API v1 authentication controller. And I'll run the tests again. And now we have a new error. The action create could not be found in the authentication controller. Now we just need to define the controller action. Oops. Run the tests again. And we have a passing test. What we want to do now is start building out our test. So we want this API to receive two params the username and the password. So we need to uh, jump back into the 
test and add two params. So we we'll have a username, let's say bookseller99 and a password. There we go. Now to make sure this is working, what I'm going to do is just add a print line to the controller. So I'm going to print out the params just here. There we go, we can see the username and password are being sent across correctly. Next, let's add an assertion on the uh, response. So we're making the post here and then I can do expect response to have HTTP status um, and this should have a status of created because we are creating a new um, session or creating a new login and we would also expect the response body to equal we want the response body to include a JWT token if you remember back to the previous video I explained that this endpoint is the authentication endpoint and the user makes a request with their username and password and they get back a token which they can then use for subsequent API calls. So this response should have a token inside it. Oops. One, two, three. So if I run these tests, we'd expect them to fail. And the first failure is due to the um, response code. By default, Rails will return a 204 because it's not returning anything. And I can fix that with render JSON token 123 and status created. There we go. So now our response code is correct and the token is correct. Uh, sorry, the um, response code is correct and the response body is correct. Before we move on, let's consider the edge case where the user doesn't provide a username and password. If the user does provide a username and password and they are invalid, we should return an unauthorized error. But if the user doesn't provide any params at all, we should probably provide a status code um, that tells them their params are missing or params are invalid. So let's say um, it returns error when username is missing and it returns error when password is missing. And by the way, you can actually define it blocks like this in uh, RSpec, and it just means when you run the tests, you'll have uh, pending specs. So let's flesh these out. When we make the API call, we expect the response code to be, I'm going to go with unprocessable entity. Now this status code, so this is a 422, and it means that the, the syntax of the request was correct, but for some reason the API was unable to process the request. So it's probably, probably the correct status code to use here. Um, and then in the response uh, body itself, 
we'll explain the specific error in more detail. So we'll say that the username uh, parameter was missing. So let's do the same thing here. And of course, I've forgotten to actually change the test. So in this case, the username is missing. And in this case, the password is missing. So if I run these tests, there we have the two failures. To handle this logic, the first thing we need to do is actually get this controller raising an error. You can see at the moment that whatever params we pass in, the controller is just passing through the uh, created successful response code. So the first thing we can do is use required params. Uh, so for example, I can do params require um, and this would be username and I could do password. Now if I run the tests again, you can see we're getting an action controller parameter missing error. And we're printing out the specific params when they are there. Now obviously we wouldn't leave our code like this. Um, but I'm going to leave it there for now because what we will be doing in the future is um, passing these params into some sort of service which will generate the token. So it will be useful to use params require because we want to know as early as possible if the user has provided invalid params. Okay, so we have our, our errors now and we can now use a rescue from block. So we can say rescue from uh, action, oops, uh, action controller parameter missing. And then we can say with and specify a handler method. So I'll just call it parameter missing. Then I can define a private function, so a private method, sorry. Uh, parameter missing, oops. Parameter missing to handle this. And I can also pass in the error, which I can then use to render out to the client. Then what I can do is render JSON and I can say error e dot messages, uh, sorry dot message. And by the way, this errors parameter gets passed along automatically from the rescue from, and you can either specify it or leave it off if you don't want to use it. Now all I need to do is specify the status of um, processable entity. Okay, so now if I run those tests again, uh, oh, I made a typo there, I think. It's the one C. There we go, they're all passing. So now these two extra tests that we added are getting the right status code. Uh, one thing we should also do though is check the response body of these. So I'll expect the response body to equal, we should get error, oops, uh, what did we say, error, um, let me just run this test, I can't remember exactly what the, the error message would be, there we go, so prime is missing or the value is empty, username, and we should get the same thing here for uh, password. There we go.
I hope you found this useful. In the next video, we'll continue to build out our authentication endpoint. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.